Hi, and welcome to the fifth video for your field work. I'm Dr. Joanne Bam. Um, this piece is on the required paperwork. So you will have an assignment um, about your placement site. It's, it's going to ask the name, the location, the supervisor, and ask for your supervisor to sign it um, pretty early on. Um, your field work placement may be verified by anyone um, in the department. Um, some courses do just have an assignment that asks you to state where you are uh, observing and locating, but just know that we will check in as needed uh, based on our logs um, filled in and to verify placements. In addition, you will have a program letter in your uh, things. I can't get to it. Hold on. And it looks like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll that down. So it's going to say Center Program External Learning Partner, um, your instructor's name um, for this course, it's myself, um, the course that you're in, and then you should put your name in the student name section. Um, and this just gives the program a little bit background, all the stuff we've already talked about. It talks about um, the hours and the ages you would need to work with to, based on where your class is. Um, it talks, tells them that you have to comply with any requirements that they have if you want to observe at that location. It talks about that we don't do background and fingerprintings and that we have this expectation of professionalism for you. And it gives them my contact information. Um, I recommend that you bring this letter. It also, some places will say, we require a letter um, from your instructor saying that you um, are in this class and should take it. Um, and so this is the letter that they want. So print that, bring it with you. If they don't ask for it, then they don't need it. If they want it, you can give it to them. Um, and that way they have my contact information. Sometimes the administration office doesn't want it, but your uh, teacher that you're observing might want it to, so that they can have contact or maybe the principal wants it. So I encourage you to print this, give it to them. If they don't do anything with it, that's for them. Um, but it, it it's a good letter to have um, with you when you go to sign up for the program for the site. The next piece is the professional guidelines. Um, so try to arrive on time. If you say you're going to go, go. Notify the program or the school if you're going to be late or not going to come. This can so when you go for the first time, it's good to great get an email and say, hey, can I get your email just in case I need to communicate with you or send you information? Because sometimes teachers will plan something thinking, okay, I'm gonna have this person in the room to help me. So um, you not going could cause a problem for them. Remember to dress professionally. So you want to dress for the job you're going to have. You should not be wearing jeans. You should not be wearing any tank tops or spaghetti straps. Um, definitely um, cap sleeves or longer for girls. Um, no t-shirts. Okay, even if that is what the teachers are wearing, you want to give off a great impression. So I encourage you to dress like you would um, to go to a nice event, to go out to dinner for a fancy dinner, um, or to go, not super fancy, like you don't have to wear a dress, but like nice church clothes or uh, professional clothes. Um, once you get comfortable, if you've gone a couple times and you kind of feel like, okay, this is the way the teaching, the teaching staff dresses, then you can dress similar to how they are dressing. But remember, you are trying to impress to get the job. They already have the job. So you want to make a good impression because you never know who you're going to see later um, when you are trying to get your, your actual teaching job. Um, it's a very it's a smaller community than you think. Um, so just remember, you are representing our school. Be professional. Um, do not wear any uh, clothing with holes or rips in them. Um, we want to make sure we're giving off that professional vibe. Um, asking questions. There's going to be times when you do want to ask a question to clarify something for an assignment perhaps. Please do that when they are not teaching. Okay. Please make a note of it. Plan to ask them. Say, can I send you a quick email to ask some follow-up questions just to clarify what you were doing, but do not disrupt their time with children to meet your needs because they're there to teach the kids, not to necessarily be your instructor. So try not to interrupt them or ask questions throughout. If there's a downtime and they're say, hey, do you have any questions or can I ask you a quick question? That's fine. Confidentiality. Please realize that it's smaller than you think. Do not talk with your friends and the family about all the things in your um, scene in the schools. You can talk about them in generalities. Just don't do use names 
um, in people's or even the school location. Right? Just say and be like, wow, I saw this today. Um, and, and just say a little boy was doing this and the teacher said this. Like you can keep it like that, but not be sharing very specific names and things. People hear stuff and they will share what they have heard people saying and passing on. Um, don't get into gossip at the location. Um, it's very easy to do, so but try to avoid that as well. Um, if you have a professional issue come up, talk with the administration at the school and talk with myself or your instructor as well, um, and we can help you address those concerns. Basic health and safety, make sure you follow all the school policies for health and safety, that's hand washing, being absent if you're sick or contagious, reporting any unsafe behaviors you see, if you see inappropriate things that you are concerned about, if you're unsure, talk to your instructors. If you are sure, go straight, straight to the administration there. And then also let us know so that we can be aware. Um, you must follow all crisis plans, tornado, fire drill, and etc. I know I said you're not counted in ratio. There's one exception. If there is an emergency evacuation of any kind, you are considered an adult who can help. So if there is a fire, you can help. If there is a tornado, you can help. Um, same thing, if there is a fire drill, you support the teacher in getting the students out of the class. You know, walk at the back of the line, all that types of things. Do not leave during an emergency plan, uh, drill or actual situation. You need to stay with your class because they have to account for everyone who was in the school and in the classroom, so make sure you stay. Um, now, you do never release uh, children. You never take in, don't let a parent say, hey, here's my kid. Don't let them drop off or release a child. Let the staff do that because you don't know the policies and procedures. Once again, that is unless you are an employee. I'm trying to hurry up because this, this video is already seven minutes long and I don't want to do another one. And so the last piece is early childhood programs and school policies. You are expected to follow any policy that they set forth for their own staff. Um, or that they just require for people visiting of the center. Any policy or regulation that they have, you should follow. Um, and that's our expectation is that you're going to do so. Okay, that is it for your field experience. If you still have questions, please contact myself or your instructor, and we will be happy to help.